This is my element collection. It's taken me over 10 years to collect all 80 stable elements on the periodic table, but I've finally done it and I thought we'd go through it today. I've been interested in chemistry since I was a kid and I also like collecting things. So I guess it makes sense that I started element collecting. There's a few different ways people do element collecting. You can either collect pure samples to be able to show off the elemental properties and their appearance, or you can collect samples that contain the element you're looking for. So my aim for this collection was to collect pure samples of all the elements, which I mostly succeeded with, but there's a few elements that are so reactive, like fluorine gas, for example. So instead I've got a compound containing fluorine. You can tell how long ago I started this collection by the state of the periodic table that I've been using to track my progress. Look, these elements down here weren't even discovered when I started the collection. So you might be thinking, why did you give up 80? Why didn't you collect all 118 elements? Well, for a start, all of these elements down here were just made up by physicists because they have OCD and they want the periodic table to be nice and square. Seriously though, everything heavier than uranium, so all of these and these, uh, you don't find them in nature, they're way too unstable, so they were all discovered by bashing things together in a particle accelerator and creating a few atoms of these elements, so it's not really something that I can collect. In fact, everything heavier than bismuth is radioactive, so these, this, all of these, and these ones as well, they're all radioactive. And even bismuth itself is kind of radioactive, except its half-life is a billion times longer than the age of the universe, so we kind of just pretend it's not. So that explains most of the red, but there's also just a few anomalies like technetium, which is also very unstable, even though it's just in the middle of all these transition metals, which is kind of weird. And uh, promethium is also too unstable for me to get a sample of. These white ones here, I've just forgotten to color the sheet in, but I've got all those samples, so don't worry about that. So let's take a closer look at the collection. So first we have hydrogen, simplest and most abundant element in the universe. When it's excited by a high voltage like this Tesla coil, it emits a pink glow. And here's the emission spectrum of that glow seen through my pocket spectroscope. Next we have helium, used for supercooling magnets in NMR and MRI machines. Like hydrogen, it emits a glow from high voltage and here's its spectrum. Next we have lithium, the lightest solid element it even float on water. Beryllium, another light metal, is actually transparent to x-rays, which gives it some niche scientific uses. Boron, known for its ability to absorb neutrons, plays a vital role in nuclear reactors in the control rods. Carbon, the basis for all known life forms, also comes in some inorganic forms like this graphite or diamonds. Nitrogen, makes up 80% of our atmosphere, and also emits this cool purple glow and has a unique spectrum. Oxygen, the life sustaining gas, also emits a cool spectrum and has an interesting glow. Neon, the classic glowing element, producing a warm orange glow that you'll see in neon lights. Fluorine, I couldn't get a pure sample through the mail, so instead I've got a calcium fluoride mineral. Sodium, used as a vapour in some street lights to create that warm yellow glow. Magnesium, known for its low density and ability to create a blinding white light when ignited, often used in flashbangs and fireworks. Aluminium, the metal is actually quite reactive, but it quickly forms an oxide layer on the surface which passivates it. But unlike rust, it doesn't flake off and allow further corrosion. Silicon, the second most abundant element in Earth's crust after oxygen. It's become a vital component of electronics and semiconductors. Phosphorus forms the backbone of DNA. It has a couple of well-known allotropes like red phosphorus, which is pretty chill, or white phosphorus. Sulfur, an interesting yellow crystal, historically known as brimstone often has a smell of rotten eggs due to the production of hydrogen sulfide gas. Chlorine, I don't have the pure gas because it's too reactive, but I have a piece of crushed up pool tablet which releases chlorine when you add water to it. Argon, another noble gas, obviously it's unreactive so not much interest in chemistry, but it has an interesting glow and spectrum. Potassium plays a vital role in our bodies, controlling heart and muscle function. Calcium, a familiar element found in milk and bones, but did you know that elemental calcium is actually a grey metal? Scandium, when combined with iodine, 
forms a compound that emits a bright white light that's used in stadium lighting. Titanium, very strong and also has great biocompatibility. So it's used in a lot of medical applications like hip replacements. Vanadium, tough, durable, used to create alloys for armor plating and shock resistant materials. Chromium, great corrosion resistance, added to steel to create stainless steel. And it's also used for chrome plating cars. Manganese, an element with many colorful oxidation states. Iron, pretty ubiquitous. I'm surrounded by it right now. And it's also the center of hemoglobin proteins in your blood, which allow it to carry oxygen through your body. Cobalt, known for the famous cobalt blue pigment used widely in art and ceramics. Nickel, widely used in steel production, also forms some nasty carcinogens. Copper, a naturally antibacterial element that's been used for millennia to create tools and weapons. Zinc, an element used to sacrificially protect the hulls of ships in a process called galvanization. Gallium, a unique element that melts in your hand at room temperature. It can be a great alternative to mercury in certain applications. Germanium, an element that's widely used in electronics. It's also transparent to infrared light. Arsenic, a toxic element known for its environmental contamination, particularly problematic in rice paddy fields. Selenium, quite unusually for a heavier metal, it's actually a essential micronutrient for humans, but toxic like arsenic in higher quantities. It's also known to reduce the neurological effects of mercury poisoning by combating the oxidative damage in the brain. Bromine, the only non-metal element that's liquid at room temperature. Again, I couldn't get an actual sample of it. So I've got a bromine pool tablet, which releases bromine when water is added to it. Krypton, another noble gas with a cool glow and spectrum. Rubidium, a very reactive alkali metal that's sometimes used in vacuum tubes as a getter. So it reacts with any gas particles that are still bouncing around inside a vacuum tube to create a really strong vacuum. Strontium produces red color in fireworks and also when combined with aluminium to create strontium aluminate, it creates a glow in the dark pigment. Yttrium used in the production of phosphors for old cathode ray tube TVs and computers. Zirconium, sometimes used in nuclear reactors as fuel rod cladding because of its low neutron absorbing ability. Niobium, a superconducting element that's used in NMR and MRI technologies. Molybdenum, the metal has an interesting blue shine and the melting points are very high at 2600 degrees Celsius. Technetium, we don't have it because there's no stable isotopes found in nature but it felt weird to skip it, so I'll just say that Technetium-99 is a radioactive isotope that's used in nuclear medicine. Ruthenium, a fancy element that's used in organometallic catalysis quite a lot. Rhodium, another fancy element. It's very reflective, so it's used to coat searchlights to increase their brightness. Palladium, an element with excellent catalytic abilities. It's used in catalytic converters to convert harmful pollutants like carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide into less harmful pollutants like carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Silver, prized for its appearance for millennia, it also has natural antimicrobial properties. Cadmium, a highly toxic element used in batteries, similar to lead. Indium, a precious metal with a very soft texture, you can actually bite into it very easily. Tin, a metal with quite a low melting point used to create low melting point alloys and solder. Antimony, another element known for its highly toxic nature. Antimony trioxide is used as a flame retardant in a lot of applications. Tellurium, another highly toxic element. An interesting symptom of tellurium poisoning is actually a strong garlic aroma from the breath and perspiration. Iodine, an element known for its antiseptic properties. It's often used to disinfect surfaces and prevent wounds getting infected. Xenon, another noble gas that glows. It's also used as the fuel for ion propulsion systems in spacecraft. Cesium, one of the most reactive elements used in atomic clocks and photoelectric cells. Barium is excellent at absorbing x-rays, 
so it's often used as a contrast agent in medical imaging. Lanthanum doesn't have a lot of uses, but apparently it's sometimes used in catalysis and in certain types of glass. Cerium, a pyrophoric element that's used in those fire starting rods that you strike with a knife to create sparks to start a fire. Praseodymium has an interesting light absorbing properties. It can absorb light of one colour and emit it as a different colour, so it finds use in optics. Neodymium, well known for its use in very strong magnets. Promethium, as I said earlier, is completely unstable, so unfortunately we don't have a sample of it. Samarium, very good at capturing neutrons. It's used in a cancer treatment called neutron capture therapy. Europium, used to create red phosphors in old cathode ray TVs. Gadolinium, used as a contrast agent in MRI scans to visualize tumors. Terbium, an element used for green phosphors in cathode ray televisions. Dysprosium is also used in phosphors, but this one produces a nice warm light. Holmium, one of the isotopes, Holmium-166, can act as a burnable neutron poison in nuclear reactors. So basically neutrons hit it and it transforms into dysprosium and other elements. So it's used up as the reaction happens, which helps regulate the nuclear reaction. Erbium can be used to create infrared lasers. So it's got wide applications in telecommunications, scientific research, etc. Thulium, an element used in portable x-ray machines. It can create high quality x-rays which produce a nice clean x-ray images. Ytterbium, used in atomic clocks that can measure time incredibly precisely. Lutetium, its radioactive isotopes are used to target cancer cells and some cancer therapies. Hafnium, an element used in high temperature alloys for jet engines. It can withstand incredibly high temperature and stress. Tantalum, its capacitance and stability allow it to be used in high quality capacitors. Tungsten has the highest melting point of any element, about 3400 degrees Celsius, so it's often used in high temperature applications like light bulbs. Rhenium is added to certain stainless steel alloys to increase temperature and corrosion resistance. Osmium, the densest natural element and one of the rarest, it's sometimes used in fancy fountain pen tips. Iridium, a very rare and valuable element. Earth's crust actually has much less iridium in it than pretty much everything else floating out in space because when Earth was forming and it was like a big ball of lava, the iridium has a high affinity to iron, so it clung to the iron and most of it sunk down into the core of the planet. So there's actually quite a lot in Earth, but just not accessible to us. But it means that when something big happens, like an asteroid hits the Earth and wipes out all the dinosaurs, we can actually see that in the geological record because there's a thin layer of dust buried over a large area that's higher in iridium than anything else on Earth, which helped prove the asteroid hypothesis for what happened to the dinosaurs, because it showed that it was much more likely there was something extraterrestrial that happened rather than a volcano or something. Platinum, an excellent catalyst that's used in catalytic converters and hydrogen fuel cells and renowned for its excellent stability. Gold, the unique warm golden color that humanity's prized for centuries is actually due to a quantum effect called surface plasmon resonance. Mercury, the only liquid metal at room temperature, used to have a wide range of applications like thermometers and stuff, but is widely been phased out because it's pretty toxic, especially in organic forms. Thallium, incredibly toxic, so I couldn't get a pure sample of it, but apparently there's trace amounts of it in pyrite, also known as false gold. Lead, used in roofing, piping, lead acid batteries in cars, all known to be quite toxic if you breathe it in. Bismuth, famous for its crazy geometric crystal structure and colourful oxidation states. Radium, a radioactive element used in a lot of old watch hands to create a glow in the dark effect. Thorium, an element with potential to create clean nuclear power. It has advantages over uranium in terms of safety and application. Although you can't use thorium to create nuclear weapons, so I guess we won't be using that anytime soon. Uranium, famous for its use in nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons, also creates an interesting glass that glows under UV light. So that's all the elements in my collection. I think my favourite element based on looks has got to be bismuth. I mean, it looks like some sort of alien technology, doesn't it? 
But based on its weird biochemistry, I think tellurium's got to be up there as well. I mean, not only will it kill you, it'll also give you bad breath. It's just rubbing salt in the wound. Let me know in the comments what your favourite element is and why. Thanks for watching. Bye.